you mentioned that you address um, issues of societal concern, but also environmental issues of key importance to your organization. We are at the midst of COP27 now, and uh, I uh, read that you have published a few statements uh, on climate, on the connection of climate and poverty, but also on the impact of climate change uh, on the global south. Why are these key issues for your organizations? Yeah, first of all, I think I should mention that uh, some of our members, all of our members within the Central Committee are doing this voluntarily, are currently in Shamal Sheikh, uh, accompanying the process, lobbying for their positions, because also international organizations um, are part of, of our structure. It is important because we take a, a very global, a very sustainable uh, perspective on things. And um, I think it's quite good that uh, we currently receive a lot of support also through Pope Francis, although we also make very clear that we as, as lay people take an independent position. But uh, given that um, Pope Francis, since he was elected in, in, in 2013, um, always also focused on ecolo ecological questions, on questions of sustainability with his two documents, his, his two encyclicals, uh, Laudato to see and, and Fratelli Tutti, where he takes a very comprehensive understanding of peace, a peace that is not only the absence of war, but also that takes into consideration social welfare, um, um, a social ecological balance, and this gives us a lot of hope. And um, this is also translated through some of our member associations, among others are Miserio, Adveniat, so organizations that are working worldwide who have direct access to the vulnerable groups and, and societies that already today, uh, and not only since today, suffer from uh, climate change consequences. And this brings us also in the role as an advocate to lobby for those um, people that might not have a voice in German politics, in politics in general when it comes to the global north, um, so that we can build bridges here, not only as Catholics, but also as, um, as, organiz as an organization that has direct access to decision makers. And this uh, makes it very important. I mean, given our Christian belief, of course, that, um, that the whole globe needs a better future, that we think uh, also in terms of the next generation. Uh, and still we have uh, strong young voices also in our structures that make this a very uh, pivotal point, um, saying that uh, older generations did not do enough to protect the climate, to protect our Earth. Um, and I think this is, I mean, this is a wide variety of, of pillars that uh, give us enough support to, to work on these um, issues uh, more concretely. Thank you very much. Uh, you also referred to Lauda to See, um, praise be to you, um, which is the second uh, answer encyclical of Pope Francis, um, and it has the subtitle on care for our common home. And um, uh, in this, uh, in one of the chapters, he criticizes quite a bit consumerism, irresponsible development, um, environmental degradation, uh, global warming, and he calls also for people to change behaviors uh, and to unite for global action. Would you subscribe uh, to such a st strong statement? I think in general, it's it, these these prerequisites that he brings together here as a design is something that we that we totally can subscribe to um, because I think also in Germany uh, with very strong groups now advocating for for more concrete and, and more ambitious uh, climate um, policy, it is crystal clear that we have to introduce more traumatic changes when we want to reach and and uh, and, and fulfill the 1.5 degree target then I think what we are doing con concretely today is not, is not enough. Um, we have a legal framing, and I think we will discuss this later more concretely. We have a financial responsibility, um, and it's a responsibility um, that has a national and a global dimension. When we talk about the vulnerable people, we also have to, to check uh, about the situation within Europe. I mean, we also have low-income groups here in Germany, in Europe, that need to be protected, that need to be considered when we do concrete policies, especially currently in a perfect storm situation where so many crises show up at the same time. Um, 
but this does not replace the global responsibility, especially as an actor as Germany, and, and you've mentioned multilateralism, which is at the core of our international understanding. We are part of this one world, uh, not only in, as Christians, but also I think as, as Germany here, I think we share many values um, as, as church representatives, but also as, as, um, as the German government is currently framing its, its climate approach. Um, and uh, for that, I think the, the, the general assumption, yes, is right. When it comes to the to the consequences, we also have to see that um, we can, in Europe or in Germany more concretely, do a lot because of a certain welfare standard. It is, needs also to be um, protected in a way. Uh, I think not through closed borders, but also in focusing on current needs of the German economy, for instance. There is a great crisis status currently. Um, the German economy is based um, mainly on, on uh, small, medium-sized enterprises that are now currently struggling with the situation in which they are now investigating into the idea of, of moving their companies to other countries. And this makes it, of course, then also difficult for us to make this contribution that needs to be definitely um, sized um, economically, financially, politically. Um, and I think here comes a certain dilemma situation where Pope Francis definitely makes the right point, criticizing current consumers' interests who might not have always the feeling that they are in charge, that they can do the that they can make this difference that is needed. And this then needs also, I think, to be translated into the national level, into the level of decision makers. Thanks a lot, Mark. If we look at achieving the 1.5 grad Celsius objective, we are all aware that at the moment, as you said, we are not on track. Do you think that um, technological innovation, um, companies, um, the business sector can solve the problem? Or are you also critical or do you see also the need for personal investment, for trying to consume less, trying to have a more sustainable lifestyle? So um, what is your specific objective or specific idea on this? I think in general we should um, enable people and enable actors in this regard and should not create new borders or create um, artificial enemy structures. I think everybody has a certain responsibility and every individual, be it a person or be it a company, uh, needs to check where he, she can do more, can do better. Um, yes, individual consumerism needs to be um, definitely be more in the focus. I think a lot has changed throughout the past years. Uh, when, I, when I think about um, supply chains, I think there's today much more awareness that um, textile industries um, should also follow certain standards, standards that are in the core of our values when it comes to human rights. Uh, we are discussing in these days a lot uh, the, um, the um, soccer um, World Cup in, in Qatar, but I think also our individual um, interests, uh, be it in the textile industry, as to take one concrete example, is, is something that in, in recent years I think has uh, raised much more awareness than, than before. When it comes to technical innovation, I would, I would argue the same way. I think, I mean, especially a country like Germany that has little to no natural resources very much depends on innovation. Without innovation, we wouldn't be where we are today. Um, so I would take a quite a positive um, uh, stand in this regard, saying that yes, we need more of this kind of innovation. Of course, in the framing of a of a value oriented setting, um, but I think only this will also enable us to make our also technical contribution uh, to a climate and environment protection. <laughs> 